Now let's just have a look at the mechanics of how an organ works. This is a representation of the wind chest in an organ. Air comes in there and uh, we don't want air to come through all the holes so we have these devices um, which slide and we're going to pull this one out and so the, stop, the holes in that row come in line with the holes at the bottom and we get air to all four holes. Now we want to add the keys and they have sliders going the other way and if we press that key this slider comes out and we've got air through only one hole. And so by uh, using combinations of stops and keys, you can get any hole you want. Well now, a little while ago, uh, when we were, knew we were going to do this, we thought it might be difficult to bring a complete church organ into the theatre. So by the kindness of the rector, Monsignor Canon Miles, we were able to take cameras to uh, St. James Spanish Place Church. And this is the result of our visit. Thank you. This is Terry Worrell, who's the director of music here at St. James, and he's very kindly let me sit down at the organ so that we can uh, talk about it. Well, the first thing to notice is that there are really not one organ, but four organs. Three separate ones controlled by keyboards and another one controlled by the pedals. Yes. And if I just play something on this central keyboard here, which we call a great organ, nothing happens. And that's because there are no stops, are no stops pulled out. OK. So if I pull out, say, this one, which is an eight foot stop, eight foot is the normal pitch. But then I can go up an octave higher than that. And if I do the same thing on a four foot stop, and then we can go up to a two foot stop, and then there's another peculiar one, this is the uh, 12th, which is an octave and, and a fifth, fifth, isn't it? So, And then perhaps if I play a chord, you could pull them out in, in succession. That's the 8 foot, 4 foot, 2 foot, and the 12th. Well, that's beginning to build up to organ tone, and those are all what you might call tin whistle type stops. I suppose that's an insult, really. But, uh, <laughs> a sophisticated, sophisticated tin whistle. Tin whistles. Then there are also reed stops, and if we go over to uh, these stops, which control this manual, uh, if I, for instance, pull out this one, that's a horn stop. Now this is on what's called a swell organ, and it's called swell. Why? Well, because it, we can make a crescendo with it by opening the swell shutters. Uh -huh. And we'll go and see those later on. Yes, but for the moment, I'll just play a chord and then open the shutters with the pedal. And that not only changes the loudness, but it 
changes the quality. It alters the quality of sound on, on some stops. Yes. yes, and this is one of the, I think, wonderful features of English organs, yes. the, the change of quality. Well, that's the, those are the basics. Now, I mentioned the, the swell box. There's also uh, a box on the choir organ, which that's is right. down here and controlled by these stops. Now, of course, when the organist is in the middle of playing, uh, he's using his hands and his feet, and then he wants to change stops. Now, that can be a complication, so... It can be very difficult on a large organ like this yeah. one. So, there's, an e there's a way of doing this. It's an easy way with, with pistons, which can be... which can give us a combination of stops. So, you just press a, a, a piston, and these are electrically operated. They're electrically operated and, and you can reach you can, them with your finger. Yes, and you, or your, your thumb underneath. Yes. Where you, you can actually be playing and, and push a stop, push a piston at the same time. That's right. And um, you can preset those That's so right. that if you're playing a particular piece you could set them so that uh, you can build up or, yes. or change quality and so on as you go along. Good. Well, I think those are the main things that we want to talk about. Now I think what we'd like to do is to go inside the organ and perhaps you could sit here and I'll ask you to do various things and we'll see what happens inside. Right. Fine. Well, this is the underside of the great organ. This is one of the wind reservoirs where the air is stored and it goes up through these pipes. And these are the control rods. And if I could ask Terry just to play a a little chromatic scale, you can probably see the rods moving. And now we'll go inside. Well, on this side we've got the great organ, and at the back you can probably see the uh, tin whistle type pipes that I called them earlier on and here are some of the reed pipes. Now there are a lot more pipes inside this box here, this is where the swell organ is and I'm going to ask Terry to play a chord on the, a horn and then open and close the box so that we can hear the change in quality. Now we've seen the pipes inside the swell box, we'll go and have a look at the large pedal pipes. Well, these are some of the lowest pipes in the whole organ. These are the ones that Terry plays with the pedals. It's called a violone stop. And in a moment, I'm going to ask Terry to play a little descending scale. When we get down to this one, which is the bottom C, I'm going to put my hand in so that you can actually tell that it is this pipe that is playing. my hand in, you see it stops, take it out and it starts up again. Well there are well over 3,000 pipes in that organ. The, the lowest one we saw is about 16 foot long and the highest one <laughs> This isn't it, this is a similar one, is only just about an inch long. You can see there's the hole where the air comes out and that's the speaking length. And if I blow it, you may be able to hear it. Well, that's the, the highest sort of uh, note that you'd ever get.